the NFL Players Second Acts Podcast. I'm Peanut Tillman, and this is my uncle, Roman Harper. Welcome to the show. What's up? What's up, dog? <laughs> it's always something to do with you. I got, I got jokes for days with the grades. That, 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 that just rhymed. That, man, must be on a good day already. I'm a lyricist. Well, anyways, I want to thank all of our listeners for always tuning in. Continue, as I always tell you, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Hit, give us a, a like, a follow, and always give us a review. And uh, anywhere you listen to your podcast, whether it's iHeartRadio or Apple Podcasts or anywhere else you listen to podcasts, you can always find us, the NFL Players Second Acts Podcast. Now, the Super Bowl is done. It's yeah. wrapped up. The season's over with. What an exciting time we got to experience Phoenix. Your first the, one. My first Radio Row experience. Yeah. It was awesome. It was just getting to see everybody, looking at all the entourages, who had the biggest entourage? Who didn't have an entourage? Looking at all the crazy and the madness yeah. inside that building. It was fun, Pino. It was a once in a lifetime experience for me. Joe Montana, definitely. Stephen A. Stephen A had the biggest entourage. Uh, there was no how question. Many people? 12 deep. Double 12, figures. At least. 12 deep. I mean, he'd probably say he had 15. But overall, it's probably 12. Not not necessary. I think my entourage is like just just me. I came out here solo dolo, so it's just it's just me. What are you two? People on Toronto, I'm usually want. just, I mean, if I'm with the fam, then it's like four. But other than that, all right. So we got to talk to and sit down and talk to a lot of different guests all week long. The experience was awesome. The conversations were deep. We really got to really have a, a really deep dive into um, some really different experiences yeah. and everybody's second act. So who we got up first? Uh, we got Hall of Famer Brian Weapon X Dawkins. We got Akbar Bajal Biamilla. And right now, we'll kick it off with this first interview with Brian Dawkins. We're joined by NFL Hall of Famer, man of faith, Brian Weapon X Dawkins. Thank you. Thank you. Greatness, thank you, man. Thank you, thank you. Greatness. Bless. So look, I, I got, my nickname is Peanut. I think everyone know how I got my nickname. My aunt, Lil Baby. I got the nickname, big old head and everything. Where where did Weapon X come from? It's, it's really my love for Wolverine, the, the, okay. com the comic book character. Yeah, okay. And um, the way that I play the game before that. So before he became um, Wolverine, Weapon X, yeah. I was I called myself Idiot Man. So I, I turned into a different cat when <laughs> I started on the field. Weapon X sounds a lot better. Yeah, so Weapon yeah. X sounds a whole lot better. <laughs> I, yeah. But it's just that the way that I play the game, when I when I touch the dog on field, I flip that switch, and that's, yeah. a, that's a different person. So that is Weapon X. And I always tell people, Brian Dawkins has never played a down in the National Football League. It was always Weapon X. So so is it because Wolverine, because I'm a big comic book guy, just yeah. everybody needs to know this, Wolverine is the man, one of the baddest X-Men out there of all time. Was it the healing factor? Was it the adamantium? Well, claws that that brought it out, or was it really just his rage when he lost it? That's when he so was so. So best. here's the thing: is if you you know his backstory, I do. You know the darkness in his back. Yes. Yeah. And you know that it's hard for him sometimes to control those things. Mm -hmm. But when he does, and he uses it for the good, to, for the love of his for the, his fellow X Men, yeah. he's unstoppable. Correct. So that's all of those things, the complexities of the character. All of that brought me into that character because I have some things in my past I'm not so thrilled about as far as some some dark the parts yeah, of but, me but I, I've learned how to funnel and channel those things into a positive direction and so that's the main thing with Wolverine yeah it's the fact that he's <laughs> animanium he's super healing but it's the complexity of the character that really right. drawed me into alright so I gotta get this out of the way too and then we're gonna we get to a real interview questions yeah. the arms cause like look I play safety. I tried to model my game just <laughs> like you. Literally, when I saw the veins popping, he's coming out flexing. I'm like, dude, I got to get my arms right. So I literally this is a true built story. my whole workout. This is a true story. Regiment. He don't ever want to do. Like, Rome is built like a damn chicken. Like he big up top. He got little chicken legs. All Rome want to do is bench arms all day. My, I'm doing some kind literally of arm exercise day. every day. But look, I mean, I can wear long socks. So. You don't see that, but you always see your arms. You so, right, you right. What you just said <laughs> is eloquently placed and put, right? So I always talk about the back arms, right? Uh huh. So the back the arms. Tricep. The tricep. Yeah. Look like a horse. 70%. Yeah, you get, yeah, yeah. You get yes. your back arms right, yeah. right? And then you go out and handle your business. Then, so, so for me, it's also an intim intimidation thing. So when you were walking, walking on, uh, on the field, and you've al you already saw what I did on film. And I'm, I'm going to kind of give you some of my mindset. My mindset was always put crazy on film. 
Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm gonna put crazy on film. I'm gonna All do right. something crazy on film to have the receivers watching for next week so that they can be thinking about that thing that I did to that person. And then you come on the game day, you see my arms glistening as well. Oh, that's that's just an extra bit of things <laughs> that you gotta swole. think about. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, it make you it make you think twice. Like, do I really want to go over the middle yeah. right now? And that's all I gotta do, pass? just to get you to so think do you, twice. Do you think? Yeah. Tell me one example or a story where you know that they saw something the week before and were a little nervous when they saw you. <sighs> dig routes. Mm. Just certain teams that run dig routes, they didn't run as many dig routes against. I'm serious. They didn't run as many dig routes against us. And sometimes it's not the first quarter that they short arm stuff. It's in the fourth quarter that yeah. they begin to short arm stuff. Because after I handled my business early in the game of, of, of de delivering that stank on somebody, right? Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden they begin to think about that thing if they do have to run a dig route. So, you know, trying to give you a specific, it's going to be hard for me to give you a, sp a specific yeah. one, but I just know that in the fourth quarter, again, yeah. there's certain routes, go-to combinations that certain teams just did not do. All right, for all those that don't know, when he said put that stank on it, he really mean put that thing on him when yeah, he hit him. He hit him yeah. hard. My yeah, bad. yeah. All my right, bad. now, now, B Doc, tell me this: yeah. How are you feeling to see the Eagles back in the Super Bowl again without you being present? Of course, I love it. I love it, and, and it's if you are a true Eagles fan, yeah, and you're honest with yourself, mm -hmm. you did not see this coming. <laughs> this is a hundred percent surprise to have this team gel together, and you know, playing the game, how hard it is to gel. And this team at, really, uh, literally acts like they've been together for years, mm -hmm. and they've only really been together for the most part for one year. Some yeah. of the new pieces, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to be able to gel all those different personalities together, yeah. all that talent, and then for the coaching staff to have learned from some of the mistakes that they've um, had from last year, mm -hmm. and now they're putting these players in position to make plays, yeah. and then the players are making plays. And again, they're having a great time doing it. So I didn't see that coming together like that. Like, like we see it. And I didn't see Hurts taking the steps that he's taking as a pro prolific uh, passer yeah. that he has this year. And the one thing that about Jalen Hurts, guard. I, it, well, it, I'm sure it has, but I, I always tell everybody the most impressive thing I've seen Jalen Hurts, because I've seen him since Alabama, you know, yeah. going to school there, is that he's literally improved every year since he's gotten out of high school. Yeah. And it hasn't been dramatic, it hasn't been huge. But every year, he's just steadily gotten better. And that's something to be said about people. But it's his mindset, though. Like, he's a very focused individual. I've seen interviews with him when he was in high school, and he yeah. just, he's poised. Mm -hmm. He's ready for that moment. And I think, although Kansas City has more experience, because mm -hmm. they've done mm -hmm. it numerous times, mm -hmm. you know, the big lights, mm -hmm. they, 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 they have that experience under Andy Reid. However, Hertz is, like, he is that dude. Like, he has been time time and time again he has been put in these situations in these moments and he's just ice in his veins yeah. he's just he's calm that's and, that's what i love about and him. so that was the thing about what you said well both of you are saying the exact same thing that i saw so when you tell me that he has made progress every year so here's the thing he has been getting ridiculed every year yep so that means that he's more than likely seeing some of the thing taking some of the good things that he can glean from some of the um not people that are criticizing him, but some of the people that are critiquing him. In, in the, um, I remember reading some things about Nick Saban saying specific things to him that he needs to pr uh, improve on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when he went to Oklahoma, guess what he did? Improved, he improved on, on those, those things, yeah. right? Yeah. Same, th same thing from last year to this year. Very inconsistent with the ball down the field. He heard that. I'm pretty sure he saw that. And what did he do? He, he got improved better, on it, right? Yeah. So when yeah. you have a mentally tough individual that can take criticism, receive it, has a high um, IQ when it comes to what do I need to do to get better because I know I'm not where I want to be or where right. I need to be. Right. And then you go work your behind off to do it. Come on, man. Like, that's, that's, he's, he's fit for Philadelphia, bro. Yeah. I'm telling you, he's fit for Philadelphia. Okay, so, all right, you've been to a Super Bowl. Yeah. You, unfortunately, you didn't win it. Mm -hmm. And I'm always giving Peanut a little bit of crap about his experience in the Always. Super Bowl too. I'm over And two. look, I mean, let's just be honest here. It's, we got three great defensive backs. We got possibly, we got one gold jacket, probably two gold jackets when it's all said and done, and one Super Bowl oh, win. And uh, <laughs> how does that make you guys feel? <laughs> you know, I know you jackets gonna fit great, but you know. <laughs> I go lie to you, that's one, that's one thing as a player that I would have loved to have 
I, yeah. I experienced I experienced one as an executive when I was yeah. with the Eagles, so I have one as an executive. But there's not there would have been nothing like me celebrating with Donovan, with you know, yeah. with Hugh, yeah. or with Trot, and with with Troy back in the day, Deuce and those guys back in the day of winning a, a Super Bowl. Um, but so you got me, yeah, you definitely. Does you, it make you, you it better though? That. I'm not going to take away. I don't think it takes away from your experiences or your love for your teammates that you don't win a championship. But does it almost like make it a little bit sweeter when you do? I, and I, I feel like I can say that, but because I've been on great teams, right? Yeah. But it's like that one team that's probably not even the best team I've even been on is just a little bit different because you won it all. It is something to be said about that, and. I don't not because you guys love your teammates. Like you tell me so many great stories. Yeah, we still about keep, your experience still about the Bears. Yeah. And, you know, and you <clears> just <throat> going in really detail about Trotter and all those great guys, all those great players with the Eagles for all those years. Yeah, like it doesn't. You don't lose love. You, no, it's just there is no love lost. Mm -hmm. You just we just didn't have the culmination of all of the hard work like you was able to experience of. You know, it, um, before it was OTAs, you know, we had a real training camp. So going through all of those rigors and all the pains and all of the setbacks and all of the injections sometimes to numb some areas yeah. up that we had to numb up because we wanted to still play, even though we probably should have sat out behind <laughs> in, there in the training room. Like doing all, going through all of that, we never experienced the final destination mm -hmm. of standing at the podium, beat up, bruised up, yeah. dirty uniform, saying we did it. Yeah. Like, that's, just a, that's just a different experience. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, switching switching gears now. Let's let's talk about obesity. Yeah, how did you how did you get involved in uh, Huddle Up? Wow. So I have been an advocate for um, learning how to do things in a spe specific way. Okay, a blessing you to live life mm -hmm. in a powerful way. And that's right. when I think of the word wellness itself. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is about. What wellness? Wellness is the idea and the thought of doing specific things mm -hmm. on a daily basis. So that you can have the vitality, the energy, the strength, and to do things powerfully from a physical and mental standpoint, yeah. right? So that obesity part of it, um, you know, I have had, and um, they've given me permission to say this to big bone individuals in my family, yeah. mm -hmm. right? My mom has had diabetes. She no longer has it. So mm -hmm. I saw firsthand the results right. of some of the, the decisions that were made in my household and how it affect the people in my household. So if I can then do things in my life, which I do, right. and that's one of the reasons I do what I do. That's one of the reasons I lift the way that I lift and still work out the way that I work out, because I want to continue to to bless this body in, in, a, in a specific way as to do things to give me that energy, that vitality to live life on my terms as right. much as I can. Right. Yeah. But on the other side of that, I want to help those individuals know that just because you have gone to a place that you don't want to be, right. you don't have to stay in that spot. Right. All of us have been on. You talked about team. Right. Mm -hmm. So I have a team of individuals in my life. Mm -hmm. Right. I have uh, doctors that I go to. I have a nutritionist that I go to. Right. Uh, uh, um, I have a um, uh, a naturalist that I go to. Mm -hmm. And so these are my teammates. Right. Okay. And they help me to come up with game plan for me and my life. Right. So my level of fitness is for me. This is how I live my life. It may not be for somebody else. So I, I don't it's ever, custom. I don't ever tell somebody to exercise the way that I do. Matter of fact, mm -hmm. I, I very seldom say the word exercise because that sometimes set people off. I say movements. Like what are the movements you like to do? What are some of the movements you would love to do in your life? So it's the moving part of doing things, getting up and not being stagnant that will help you stay away from some of the things that could potentially um, have you going to the doctor too much. Right. Yeah. So also the way that I talk about it is you want to take care of as many things while you can before someone takes it out of your hands and you have to be begin to do stung, uh, do things, excuse me, the doctor tells you to do, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. that's does. deep, that's deep. Well, yeah. look, man, we could, I know we could talk with you all day about this stuff. Uh, thank you for blessing us with yeah. your presence and just- I gotta ask one more thing though. Yeah. Oh, okay, please, I'm please. When are we gonna get a workout in, my brother? <laughs> I need it. I, I'm there. You need. You can be our cheerleader, Peanut. No, it's no, gonna be, I'm, I not, wanna, I'm not be some yelling. I'm, I feel like it's going to be some weights look, banging. I can, hey, I'm in a 300-pound like club now. I can do it. I'm, I'm benching on the 300 you now. You might. So if you do, if we do that now, like seriously now, you might call Earl. Okay. Mm. Do you know what you, Earl you is? Might, I don't want to know what Earl is. Do we, do we know what Earl is for those listening? It's vomiting from working out really hard. You might. So let me give you this last thing. So uh, if you want to have more information about this and ser seriously learn about some of the things you need to do mm -hmm. uh, for those who are listening, um, mm -hmm. this is truthaboutweight.com. 
right? The truth about weight.com. So okay. go, go on that website and look at some of the things, answer some of the questions that are going to be on there for you so okay. that you can begin to understand if diabetes like runs in your family. Yeah. So begin to it's know important. those things, the markers and all of those things mm -hmm. so that you can, again, meet with your teammate, develop a team and then meet with them to see what you need to do to be your best self. OK, I'm with right? it. Appreciate Truthaboutweight.com. Truthaboutweight.com. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. B-Doc, man. Right. Appreciate it, man. You big bone, bro. <laughs> I do have big bones, family. And little <laughs> legs. <laughs> Hold on to your seats for this play, folks, for it'll be a long time before you see another like it. Joe the Jet Perry, first African-American NFL MVP. As we continue to celebrate Black History Month across the league, we share the accomplishments of the past and present. Joe the Jed Perry was a Navy veteran, one of the first African-American players in professional football and the NFL's first African-American MVP. The first black player in 49ers team history, Perry earned a Pro Bowl selection in San Francisco. He would rush for over 9,700 yards in a 16 season career and held the league's career rushing title until 1963. Following his retirement, Perry remained involved with the 49ers organization as a scout and assistant. And in 1969, he was named to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. All right, we're back. Radio Row. Radio Row Day Super 2. Super Bowl 57, and we are you have a great guest here. Somebody I look up to. I see him all the time. Mm -hmm. Akbar. What's his last? Say it. Give it. How you? Baja be a mil. Baja be Okay, look. We call him Akbar. So, <laughs> so <laughs> for, the, for, the, for the record, yeah. can you tell us how to pronounce your full name? Okay. And what does it mean? Okay. And I the only advice he gave me was, dog, don't try and read it. Don't, don't try and read it. You Whatever read it, you it's, do. It's, it's worse than reading on the teleprompter, man. It's just, it's like, it's just it's, it's too many letters, man. No, it's uh, Akbar Oluwakemi Idowu Baja Biamela. My first name, Akbar, means great. Idowu means born after twins. Mm -hmm. I was born after my brother, Kabir, yeah. of course, who played for the Packers, and my sister, who are twins. And so uh, in the Nigerian culture, twins. in the Yoruba culture, when you're born after twins, you inherit that name. So I'm Idowu. So when they hear my last name, they uh, my, my middle name, they go, oh, we know where you fall in the order. And then Baja Biamila means big man, come save me. So my great, great grandfather was a mediator in the in the village. He's like seven feet tall. I yeah. mean, mm. so whenever people would have problems, they would say Baja Biamila, meaning big man, come save me. So uh, that's how the, the, the last name. That and, is, so, and it tells a story. It does tell a story. the See? African yeah. heritage, yeah. like the names, yeah. the Azumas, the... My, my, yeah. my, my, my college roommate, his name was Charlie Yao Pepra. Yao is Ghanaian. It means Thursday born. Oh, wow. So it, all, every, all these little was, telling stories, it's right. like very little things that nobody... You think it's just... No purpose. It's completely yeah. has a purpose. I'm just Charles Tillman. Sorry. No, no, no. no it works. Uh, Charles Tillman works. <laughs> That's why we I'm, call you I'm peanuts. Just, it's I'm right. just, I'm just Charles Tillman. Funny, quick story. You, you, uh, uh, Pisa Tinoe Samoa. We're talking about names and everything like that. Pisa, you know, great, great linebacker for us in Chicago. It was like, man, what does your name mean? Oh, it means this, it means that. And then he goes, well, what's your middle name? I know some dope middle name. He was like, uh, it's just Donald. So his <laughs> name is Pisa. Donald Tinui Samoa. It's like, come on, man. How you, your parents they got couldn't, lazy. They got, they got lazy, lazy for your middle they name? Got, no, a lot of times what happens is they may they may throw in a, a common name in order to like kind of fit in if other uh, people are having a hard time. It's for the Americans. Like, hey, just just call him Donald. Like just, <laughs> it's his name, just call him Donald. <laughs> all, right, all right. All right, all right. Yeah. So Akbar, tell me this. So how do you feel? You know, you're a Lakers fan. Yes. I'm a Lakers fan. I'm a diehard. I, okay. I call myself an originalist. Okay. Right? I was. I, I'm Showtime. I, I go back to the Showtime era. 1979. In fact, when I was born, Magic Johnson just won a championship okay. uh, for us at, as a Laker fan. Uh, so I, I know this. I came out of the womb watching the Lakers. Yeah. At the Great Western Forum. So, I mean, that's how far back You're I an go. originalist, too. Yeah. Good. So we're, uh, we're, we're on the same yep. page here. How do you feel about LeBron breaking the all-time scoring record? Because for me, as an originalist Laker fan, yep. you didn't love LeBron for, like, most of his career because he wasn't with the Lakers. Right. And so now he's with the Lakers, and he beats Kareem. Like, how do you feel? It was bittersweet for me. Okay. It was bittersweet, but I really? was happy because it <laughs> came from— 
a Laker, yeah. but it was bitter because I wanted Kareem. It was my dad's favorite basketball player. Yeah. It was my favorite basketball player. Right. To see the captain at the top. And then to see that number, which was unachievable for Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and all the other dope Carl shooters Malone. out there, Reggie Miller, all those people yeah. who could shoot. Carl Malone, nobody could get it. It was just in a league of its own. Right. So, But then you do have to sit there and recognize, like, that was an impossible record to beat. None of us will be here. Everybody here at Radio Row, no one is going to be alive to see that record be broke right. because he's still playing. At yeah, a high so level. At a high level. I mean, he's jumping around like, you know, he's 22. Yeah. So um, it was it was bittersweet for me. It really was. But it was so cool to see Kareem hand over the torch to LeBron. Um, it was such a, a, a great moment because people don't know that Kareem and LeBron haven't had a lot of interaction. Right. And so for it two people. Showed. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it was a little awkward, but I would love to, and I've, I've said this to, to to LeBron's team, you know, I would love for them to have, you know, Kareem on the barbershop, have one-on-one with LeBron and Kareem, because both these guys have not only had a big impact on the sport, off the, but it's what they do off the court. Mm-hmm. You know, LeBron has started something, and he doesn't get a lot of credit, but LeBron has changed the dynamics as far as people's management. Athletes are now wanting to, you know, like, and I'm just calling out, keeping it real, like, there was a time as a young black athlete, you came out, most of your team were white men, right? Yeah, yeah. And Very you true. didn't, you weren't including that. And you've seen what LeBron did, not only including, you know, African-Americans, but women to his team and yeah. showing that it didn't have to be dominated by one. And so representation. He's, his representation is so powerful. I'll never forget the moment I had with LeBron. I went to his uh, to the school that he had, uh, that he has in Ohio. Um, and I set up a Ninja Warrior program for these kids. Yeah. And um, I never asked them to do anything. You I know, mean, at the time I came out with my book, Everyone Could Be a Ninja. And I get a phone call from my manager and she says, hey, LeBron's team wants to use your book in his commercial, in his next commercial. I'm going, what? I'm like, yeah, sign away. <laughs> sign away. Why but I was like, but he was helping me promote my book in a time yeah. like, if you've ever, you know, you don't know you it's hard to promote a book. And so to get somebody like a LeBron James, who's willingly wanting to put and promote an African-American, you know, author, it was to me, it was like, so anyways, LeBron James to me is, I mean, you know, he always I have a place in my heart, but I'm so happy for all the success that he has on and off the court. So does he get a statue? Oh, of course. Of course he gets a now, statue. Now, where's the statue at? Is it in? Is it with the Lakers or is it with Cleveland? Is it Miami? Yeah, he will be the first to get a statue everywhere. They might end up, <laughs> he might be the first one. because He'll get one in Miami. He'll get one in, in Cleveland for sure. I mean, he is the son. Yeah, of, yeah. You know, he's the Cleveland. chosen one, yeah. Yeah, but he's I mean, LeBron, we inherit everybody. I mean, <laughs> Los Angeles is the city of stars and cars, and <laughs> you can't take that star away from us. So he's uh, he's definitely going to have so, a statue. So you think we're going to, we're going <laughs> to, at, at, at Staples or Crypto Arena? Uh, Staples. I agree. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I I'm sorry. Know. I can't. I can't. I can't even start to call it crypto. I, I love this. Yes. He's an originalist like me. Yes. I love this. <laughs> yeah, all right. So what else is next for you? We've seen you as a TV host. No. We've seen you write books. You've done all these other things in this world. Somebody like me. All right. I'm trying to. I'm just in your footsteps over here. Yeah. Number one, how do you get into doing the the TV part of it, the yep. personality, TV aspect of it? And well, what's going to be your next steps for you? Like, is there anything else you want to accomplish? Yeah, I, I think for me, the next thing was probably going behind the camera. Um, there are a lot of documentary pieces. I love documentaries, and there's so a lot of things that I would love to do from the documentary standpoint um, to, to showcase that and being off camera but behind the camera. But... You know, the journey from transitioning into yeah. to me- media wasn't, you know, an easy path for me. And that's kind of what my book was about, like, the you know, the the underground path to success. Whereas I didn't have a big name. My brother was the, you know, all-time sack leader for the Packers. I didn't have that same type of success. And there's mm-hmm. no shame. I made it to the league, but it just didn't work yeah. out the same way. Right, right. And But oftentimes, you know, like place in the media is usually served for guys who had prominent careers, yes. big names. And so I had to take what I call the backdoor approach, which was I went to an area where they knew me the most, which was San Diego. I right. went to the local station at NBC in San Diego, and I said to them, I said, hey, guys, um, my name is Akbar. I'd love to uh, host a show or do the uh, after postgame show for free. Mm-hmm. They said, for free? I was like, yeah, for free. And I did it for two years 
for free um, because I'd played for the Chargers at the time, played for San Diego State. And then from there, I was able to do CBS College Sports. From there, I got my opportunity at the NFL Network. Yeah. And, I mean, it just it took a couple of people to believe and go, wait a second. Right, right. This guy, is, he, he's talking this fantasy football <laughs> stuff a little a little different. And they gave me that opportunity. And from that, that jumped off my career because uh, an executive producer saw me uh, on the NFL Network and uh-huh. uh, for American Ninja Warriors. Like, hey, we want to bring this guy in. That's what's up. I and like the rest that. was history. Yeah, yeah so yeah. now. So yeah. my credit is... I think it's decent. You got you got good credit, bad credit. Oh no! Well, it was messed up from other people, but now I'm good. I get <laughs> hey, my experience, same, man. Same. My score, they hit me up. So I get email was, every night, every week, couple weeks. So now. you was a co-signer too on some stuff. Yes, yeah, it was no. messed up. Don't ever, don't ever, don't, don't ever co-sign. Don't ever co-sign. Don't ever co-sign. Don't ever co-sign. I'm I, I, y'all, I've done it. I've learned. I'm, do I don't not do co-sign. Uh, that, so that's good, I'm, that's I'm doing a, every time I, I I do open up something or I do buy something. I recently just purchased a car, so they run my credit. You know, experience. Tell me how you got involved. You know, with with experience. Yeah, you know, the, that was a long way to get to my back, my credit <laughs> mistake. I want to throw you under the bus a little bit. Uh, yeah, we've all Rome been there before. Credit. But I, I will, I will tell you though. But this partnership with Experian has been a long relationship. Um, but I'm super excited about it because it really is a partnership about helping people change mm-hmm. a the way they think about just Experian. In that yeah. Experian is not just a credit bureau. It is really trying to help people get financially fit. Yeah. And the way they're doing that is by helping people save money, save money, not just stuffing money underneath the pillowcase or the mattress, but by being able to take a look at your your spending habits. Mm. So, for example, we all have streaming stuff that we're streaming, right? Netflix, Hulu, um, you know, Disney Plus. Well, now you can boost your credit score with Experian Boost by taking those and then adding it and self-submitting it into Experian, and that helps to boost your credit score. Because if you boost your credit score, that means you're getting a lower interest rate, right? Yeah, yeah. And everyone can save some money right now. When we talk about inflation, inflation is at an all-time high right now, 40-year high right now Mm. for inflation. And so people are hurt right now because I'm telling you, it is... Try to go, go buy a burger, go out and try to eat out and see how much that bill come out to. Right. Yeah, it's rough so we're trying to figure out how to uh, to do that. And so with Experian Boost, it allows you it gives you that opportunity. And then the last thing is on the Experian app is they have the the tool that allows you to. And, uh, and be honest now, when's the last time you checked to see how much you're paying on your car insurance? Uh, like I'm, nobody, right? Nobody checks to see how much they're paying on there. You just put it on automatic pay. Well, now Experian has this feature to where this tool that allows you to compare your insurance with other insurance and you can see, hey, um, look at my profile with this. And man, I can, I'm paying $70, $100, $200 more than I should be, right? right a month. Yeah. So this allows you to save money in creative ways. Oh, nice. Yep. I didn't know that. Yep. Well, it's always good to be able to compare and contrast. Yeah, yep. man. You Appreciate know, you coming And out. I actually yep. do check how much I pay my insurance. Yeah. Yep. It's only because he, he uh, I don't want to lie. It's you it's lie. still under my mom and dad. We not even, we, we, I'm, cu- I'm cutting you off. You, you is lying. I'm cutting you off. Hey, I, I, hey man, we appreciate you coming out. Nope. Thank you for finally correcting how to pronounce your name Absolutely. the right way. We gonna get our credit and right. meeting behind. Well, you it. guys, got, you guys got football cred, so I mean, you guys, you guys good on that one too. Experian can help you with your football cred too. No, I'm just kidding. Can I say that? No, I don't think. I, I don't think football. I don't think they can help you with your football cred. You guys already did that. Nope, too late. He said it. <laughs> appreciate hey man, appreciate it, man. you coming. Thank out. You guys for appreciate coming. you, man. Thanks. That's it. That's a wrap on that episode. I really want to thank Brian Dawkins and also Akbar Baza via Mila. Really telling us all into their, their life. Why Brian Dawkins became Weapon X. It's a great story. <laughs> why Akbar started doing what he was doing, his experience of, hey, I got to go where they know me first. Mm-hmm. So I'm starting in San Diego and building out my brand and who I am from there. And uh, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to build our brand. So all you listeners, continue to listen. Continue to tell a friend. To tell a friend. To do what, Peanut? Tell a friend. There it is. Anytime, make sure you hit that like button. Click follow. Give us a rating and a review. Uh, on anywhere you listen to your, your podcast at, whether it's iHeartRadio or Apple Podcasts, we're there, baby. Tune in. We're out. Peace.